Hi, my name's Carl. That's my friend Tom. That's actually beautiful. And this is the Lost River. Oh! <laughs> yeah! Go on, go on. Get yes! In. <laughs> Get in! 4 a.m. a Thursday in June, and yet again I was excited to be on my way into Europe with my cameraman Tom, and just to confuse you, an old friend of mine whose name is also Tom. What should I tie? Like, you've probably forgotten why we don't fish together, and now the next 10 days I'm gonna remind you every day. I met Tom for the first time fishing on some local day ticket lakes. I distinctly remember two little kids who looked like twins walking up to me after I'd just netted a fish. I was probably 15 years old. How have you done this? How, how have you caught this fish? Just caught it on bread. And from then on, we were best buddies. I mean, <sighs> Tom was just like the cheekiest kid I knew. So right, I'm with this geezer. I don't know if you know him, but... Uh, My name's Danny. Hi. I was a little bit, I don't know, what's the word? Nervous before this trip. Because we were going to be in each other's company for about 10 days. It would definitely test whether or not our friendship was still there. The following safety information. <laughs> We were heading to Holland, not for pike nor perch, but to track down and catch some of the biggest and best looking carp I've seen in my life. It's actually gonna be hard to get to the Netherlands because I wanna keep stopping on all these lakes in Belgium and they've probably all got massive carp in them. But I'm gonna catch. <laughs> Why is everyone laughing? Every time I talk about catching a 40 pounder. Me and Carl haven't actually fished a great deal. I don't really know why Tom and I like stop talking. He's a, he's an interesting creature. We all change a little bit as we get older, we become more mature. But Tom hasn't. <laughs> no, Tom has. No, he's still that cheeky little kid that he always was. I don't think he has changed. Good old Mackies. How many nuggets did, did I order? Six. No, 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 no. How many did I order? Did you see me pressing the button? I swear I clicked nine. No. Mine's got eight. Oh, I just ate one. <laughs> There's some perch in there, apparently. <laughs> After visiting a tackle shop to buy licenses, it was time to get to the lake. We're gonna have some issues here. Yeah, we got Tom one in the back. No, Tom two in. It's, it's in order of how much I like them. So we got Tom one behind the camera here, and Tom two that we dragged along. Just wondering why you dragged me along, because uh, you haven't got Alex to catch the fish here on the channel anymore, so. Okay, that's it. That's the lake. The river. The hybrid. The thing. We have arrived. I'm nearly done, I promise. We can go look for fish very soon. Let's Ready? do it. We've got to take it steady and slow, pace ourselves. Tom! It's like going on a holiday with a little kid. I'm the grown up putting on the sun cream. He's the little one running around, getting himself tired. Oh boy. Ginger. Oh. Boy. Wow, how clear is that water? There was a vast area to search and it wasn't going to be easy, but you've got to start somewhere. Check that we'll out. just check that out first because that's close. That's a good view I got from up here. The place is so beautiful. Yeah, we need to go and have a look off the bridge. Oh. You styled it out. Did I though? Yeah. No carp at the first spot, but we kind of did anticipate that. Whilst driving to the next parking spot, I briefly looked away from the road into one of many drainage ditches that surround the area. And to my surprise, I saw five carp basking in the sun. Crikey, he's nice. Where's the bread? I reckon I could access maggots and bread quite easily. <laughs> oh no. Right, bread. There you go. I want that little pouch, you know the one which has got the bait in it? I, there we go. I'm so excited. Have you just engaged stalker mode? As a matter of fact, I did. <laughs> they spooked a bit then. Oh no, they're zooming that way. Stalking for carp was how Tom and I first met. And standing here together so many years later had me feeling a mix of nostalgia and joy, but also desperation to hook our first carp of the trip. They're a bit further out than I can pass. Man, there really is water everywhere. Yeah, he zoomed, he zoomed off a little bit. Tom, we should go back. I'm not feeling it anymore. No? No. Getting too hot for you. 
Tom, I think they're in that end corner again. Why didn't I just come around here earlier? Thing is, if I hook one, what am I going to do? Got him. <laughs> oh no. Well, that's one way to start the trip, isn't it? Oh, he's pulling some line. Welcome to Holland. Oh, what was that? Oh, that was my fish. Oh, 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 I see. There we go. We got one. We only arrived in the Netherlands two hours ago. But let's hope that before the end of the trip, we get one about 16, no, six times bigger than this one. Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. Right, let's get back to the river. This stretch is, is long, it's fast, it's deep, it changes, it twists, it turns, it's got lilies, it's clear, and then it's murky, it's, it's got boats going up and down it. I think Tom and I were both instantly captivated. For some reason, some waters, some locations just draw you in, and this place properly sucked me in. Oh, bream. You'd be walking down a footpath, turn around the little corner, and there'd be a whole nother expanse of water to explore. There were creeks, there were channels, canals, drainage systems, and it all somehow linked together. These carp could be anywhere, and I mean anywhere. We've covered some water, and so far seen some snags, some weed, and some bream. No carp located on the river yet. I mean, this looks, this looks tasty. Is this finally gonna be the spot where we find fish? Got any advice, Tom? Keep looking. We got there down one end and we were just seeing the most amazing features and we were like, oh, they've got to love it here. It's amazing, it's beautiful. We were wrong. Are we gonna end, whoa, whoa. No, I'm so close to the water, man. Thomas, Tom, <laughs> stop. I think that's it. We have had a good look, but found nothing really. Plan B is activated. We'd searched a generous amount of the Lost River. However, it was becoming apparent that it might be just too big of a challenge to find them. I don't really like putting rods out if I'm not confident they're in front of me. So we decided to check out a couple of other lakes Tom had as backups. Although it seemed those were pretty massive too. Hmm. Over the course of a day, we'd traveled all the way to Holland, caught a carp, searched half the river, and somehow lapped five other lakes. However, we'd seen absolutely nothing to go on. We then remembered why we'd come out here in the first place. We were going back to the Lost River. I think the guys have wimped out. They don't want to take on this challenge, but I reckon I could catch a couple of 60s in an overnight. Can drop you off? Yeah, I can drive the van, so. Yeah. If you want to stay here, yeah. we can just kick all your gear out. And then we, and, um, we can make two videos at once. Yeah. Win-win. Oh, no, no, you're good. I want to stay with you guys and, you know, go back to the river. Oh, that's the reason why we came out here, really. So let's go there. We're back at the... Um, what we, what's the name of this place again? I keep forgetting. The Lost River. Oh, that's why it took us so long to find it. <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> Not a lot of sun left in the sky. I think it's going to be dark soon, so it would be very nice to just get some rods out. I, I, in whatever way we do that, wherever we put them, it would be great to just get fishing. All right, let's just go. What do they say? Here goes nothing. <laughs> I'm just gonna sleep here. I think I'm gonna sleep like a baby tonight. Yeah. Until my rod screams off a 50 pounder. Cracker. I didn't catch a bream on my rod. Is that good?
good sleep. It wasn't bad. Got interrupted a few times because of bream. Car actually poached up my bream. What do you mean? Well, I mean, I was getting my waders on and you got to my rod. Oh. <laughs> Didn't even give the rod back and you carried on reeling in my bream. Oh, so. I thought you'd appreciate the support. Despite an otherwise quiet night, we decided to stay a little longer in our makeshift swim and watch the water over bacon and a cup of tea. Or at least the Toms did. I'm not that bothered about tea. Do you think Carl could ever be carpy? What's carpy about him? Oh, mate. You've done me. Carpiness. Is it a thing? Is it a thought? Is it a feeling? Is it a look? I don't know. I can't answer. It's definitely not Carl Smith. Whilst the guys watched the water, I went for a walk to try and find some signs of carp. I didn't see much, but did get talking to some local anglers who suggested we move on to a wider swim further down the river. They'd not seen any fish either, but it would give us a larger view of the stretch in which we could spend one more night watching the water before ruling it out and moving to a different area. How did you break it again? I didn't break it, let's get that straight. There's a swan chasing these two girls on a um, paddleboard and go straight through my lines. One of their fins has got caught. Wait, so I, I picked wait, it up. one of their fins? Were they girls no, or? No, mermaids. No, oh, I see. Sorry, did I not say that? We're gonna move. We're gonna forget about that ever happened and hopefully catch a lovely carp. I'm looking forward to the other swimmers. I don't have to do this. Tom's about to do a mad Hey Tom. <laughs> so I've got a spare reel for you. Have you? Oh, look at that. Look your team. Trust me, this will all pay off. I think that might be my carpiest looking rig setup I've ever done. I'm thinking there, 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 there. A million percent. Ow, should have known that was gonna hurt. Lay it down on that little clear bit. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no, Swan, you didn't see that now, did you? You didn't see that. After placing my first rig, I noticed Tom was having a hard time battling the wind in his boat, so we headed out together to find the right spots for him to fish. Cheers for helping. Teamwork. We still had no idea whether we were fishing in a good area, but we knew to even have the slightest chance of a hookup, everything had to be set just right. With a lot more space than our previous swim, it also meant that after a long day of filming, cameraman Tom could get rods out too. Do I get to keep my job if I catch the only fish of the trip? Oh no, yeah, your pay just doubled. <laughs> Does it do that by itself? <laughs> I've never actually had a 40 pounder. My bread and butter is fishing a nice old estate lake with some scalies in and I've not really fished loads of places with big fish. So my goal was to catch a, my first 40 pounder. No, I, I know, I, I just swam into my line, that feels like. Really? This is not why we come to the Netherlands. Oh wait, it's a tench. Oh, I'm happy with a tench, I like tench. B. It's better than a bream, I guess. No 20 kilo. I really hope we have one. What's happening tonight then? I'm catching a carp. It's big. Is your lens wide enough for that? No. No. Yeah, that's how big I'm going to catch one tonight. Tonight? Yeah. I don't feel as confident as Tom does. <laughs> I have seen one fish about a mile in that direction. It didn't take us long to catch one of the many bream that infest, I mean, populate the river. Be gone, foul beast. In some ways, it was a good sign. There were actually fish in the area, but with another quiet night behind us, it was becoming hard to believe this water held any carp at all. 
So what did you catch last night? Not a carp, not a bream, not even a tench. We've both been up since sort of the crack of dawn really, having a look and nothing. Why does he have to stand like that? We started reeling in, confused as to why we'd not seen or heard any signs of carp, when thanks to the help of a local angler, we caught our first break. Local anglers can be hit or miss. Sometimes they want to put you off. Sometimes they're genuine lovely people who actually change your trip. We'd been told that the carp had been spotted, heading towards their spawning grounds, located in a park in the centre of the river. Everything suddenly made sense, and now, knowing where we needed to be, it was time to pack up again and get on the move. Oh. What am I pointing my camera at? Mate, when that rod bent round and it stopped. It looks like any week we're not doing so, but if we start doing so. Just say that again, I, I couldn't understand you. If it were Tench we were after, Tom was having the session of his life. But the trip had one big goal, and I hoped we were on our way to find it. Upon entering the park, we were taken aback by just how complex the water was. There must have been 10 or so acres to target, but all divided into smaller lakes and channels. Did you see the um, the scum, where the, the middle of the scum? Something went like that, and, like rolled over, say, and the the the, we, the scum parted on the surface. But let me just get my binoculars. Oh, a bream! That was a bream. Oh, that was actually a bream. I what? saw it with my binoculars. We started exploring the park, and at first I just couldn't find them. I was starting to worry that this was another dead end, when I heard Tom give an excited shout from further up the path. Oh yeah, he's calling me. Look, 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 look. Oh damn. Oh, look, 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 moving through. Yeah. What's that? You could pick one out from the gaps in the weed, like just a little bunch of maggots or a lump yeah. of bread. I really think that's possible. Oh, no, I dropped some bread. How disastrous. Oh, Tom, he, he was looking straight at it. I pulled it away from his face. Maybe this is the cast. He's swimming straight towards it. Oh, he touched it with his lips. Oh, what was that? It's difficult, especially because the weeds, you have to get it in a gap in the weeds, sink it down perfectly it with the fish. Oh, oh my god, oh my god, he just swam over the top of it. You're in. Oh, I saw the line pull in. Did you see it? It was just caught on him. Uh, right over his back. I didn't check that it was going to sink and it floated above the heads of... Yo, oh, no! I watched it take it. I watched a really nice mirror suck it right in and I struck out of its mouth. Oh, they're still there, they're still there, they're still there, they're still there. Come on, Carl. New bait, quick. Oh, I'm shaking way too much now. Shaking way too much. Just gotta get the bait back on and cast back in as soon as possible. Because they're still there. I can't believe that just happened. I cannot believe that just happened. I, oh, they've gone. Wow, I was so close. Wow. With the fish spooked, Tom and I started barrowing the rest of our gear to a jetty we'd found earlier in the day. Here we felt we might be able to intercept fish that were coming in and out of the park. I was feeling confident that we were in the right zone, but as I sat there preparing for the night ahead, I couldn't stop thinking about those fish in the park. Seeing those carp in the water took both of us back to the excited little boys that we were when we first met. Something about spotting fish in clear water cruising around, it just gets the heart racing. I had to go back. There was no way I could focus on finding new spots, knowing there was carp I might tempt with bread off the top. I'd have to work to find them again, not lose my patience, and somehow get the bait to land just right. But I wasn't giving up. There's just a cast that will catch you a carp, where it's just slow and it flutters in between their eyes, 
not too close to their mouth, not too far away, it's not falling too fast, it's just got to be just right and I'm out of practice with that. I've sort of lost touch with that, but Carl's still got it. Oh my God. Oh my God. What I would do to catch that thing. Yeah. <laughs> Did that really just happen? Did that really, really just happen? He sucked it straight in and I've hooked a carp. He's still running, jeez. Oh, it's gonna be one of these. I really wanna land this. Oh. Oh, we're in, we're in amongst it. Okay, I can actually feel the fish a bit better now. I've also got the biggest ball of weed you've ever seen on the end. She's running. <laughs> That's carpy. You know what? He's actually coming in a bit now. I think maybe I should get rid of this weed because it looks stupid. <laughs> I think that's a common. Oh, look at the size of that can tail. Can you believe it? Yes! <laughs> yes! Oh my god. Where is it? Oh, there it is. That was a very exciting bit of fishing. So happy to finally get one of these fish. Just really want Tom to get one now, to be honest. But I'm happy that the, uh, the stalking paid off eventually. <laughs> Can you tell that I'm happy? <laughs> Riding the high from having caught. We got to work fishing around a channel that we'd discovered that seemed to be the only way in and out of the park. Where the carp were heading in to spawn or coming out having already done so, with the right amount of bait, we could potentially hold them here long enough to steal a bite or two. Tom still needed his first carp so it only made sense for him to place his rigs around the opening, whereas I fished some overhanging trees where carp might feed on their way to the channel. Everything was finally falling into place. Maybe this would be the night Tom caught his first 40. The river had other ideas, as time and time again, our rods were disturbed by pesky bream. We kept on, taking the rigs back out and replenishing the spots with bait. It was a sleepless night. I'm glad we kept the faith and powered through, but things were about to get a whole lot worse. It definitely looks like the spawning has begun. So I think we're going to have to explore some other places or at least go for a drive and uh, see what we can find elsewhere. I don't think starting on a new venue, especially a challenging one, halfway through the trip would really be a wise decision, but we didn't really have any choice. With the fish spawning at the Lost River, we had to go and find new options. Thank you. Coffee. That one's mine. Try it first. What's <laughs> happening? <laughs> <laughs> the city lakes were our main backup should for any reason the Lost River be unfishable. In fact, we'd walked a good amount of them when we first got to Holland, but hadn't seen any carp at the time. In some ways it felt like we were starting from scratch, a whole new water, acres to explore. But in other ways, this was the same old mission, get my friend his first 40 pound carp. Hey Tom. Found him. It was Tom's turn to catch one off the top and sat in front of him was an incredible opportunity. A whole group of carp were using this bay as a sun trap, basking on the surface. It didn't mean it would be easy, but the fact he had so many fish in front of him, well, I kept my fingers crossed. I know you see it. I know you see it. <sighs> He's going for it. The thing with stalking is that it's certainly not guaranteed. 
I have watched Tom put bread in front of 20 fish and every single one of them has just said, how about no? Stalking's not guaranteed. It just, it just frustrates you half the time, to be honest. At least I know where he's gonna go. There's no chance, he's moving way too quick. This is not going well. They're really spooky, which is surprising. They're just, they're just not interested at all. I don't know what to do. Come on, that is the perfect drop. That is the perfect drop. That is the perfect. Oh. I'll teach you how to do stalking if you want. Yeah? Pretty sure I showed you the way once upon a time. I've lost it. I've lost my touch. That was a long time ago though. Yeah. Shall we get rods out or shall we get food? Because I'm really hungry. Yeah, I feel like we need to go to that shop down the road because I feel like we could do with like a can of lemonade or coke or something, a little bit of sugar, something cold, maybe a beer. Or you could go healthy and have some porridge. How about this? Fish here, flick chodrigs and gaps in the weed, do all the carpy stuff, try and get posted in Subsurface Journal, and then tomorrow, Three rods on a spot, marker float, catapult, boilies, just fill it in, have a barbecue, have burgers, have... Milkshakes. What are we missing? Milkshakes. Pints upon pints upon pints of milkshake, and then just put our feet up and wait for the biggest fish in the lake to come and take a stiff hinge. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Go big, fish. then go home. Oh, fish yeah. like Terry Earn tonight. Yeah. Fish like Danny Fairboss tomorrow. It's, none of it's weedy, Tom. Just had news that a 20 kilo mirror lives in this uh, little section of the lake. Seriously? Yeah. After a tough couple of days of fishing, life all of a sudden felt good again. I'm as long as that grass cart was floating. <laughs> you said you don't like physical touch. <laughs> he did get a little bit touchy-feely at one point. Sorry, Om, that wasn't... That wasn't me. I just find it really important to never forget your Polaroids. Beep, beep, beep. Beep. Beep, li, 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 li. Breathe. We'd all needed a good night's sleep, and somewhat sadly, that's what we got. No bream, no carp. Or so we thought. In an effort not to irritate the people whose homes we were camped in front of, I turned down the volume on my bite alarms and switched on my receiver. However, at some point in the night, I'd received the bite and not heard a thing. I don't think there's a fish anymore, <laughs> unsurprisingly. <clears throat> That's not the one. Last night wasn't very good. Tom and Tom have gone to the coffee shop. They've gone to get themselves something that will wake them up a little bit. I'm waiting in the car for them to get back and then we're gonna go look for carp on the other lake. We'd moved deeper into the city to explore the second of the two connected lakes. This one was vast, open, and with the change in weather from hot sun to cool and overcast, we liked that there were deeper spots for the carp to head to over night time. That's definitely fish out there. Maybe this could be our moment, our big hit. What if we could work our way up to Tom's first 40 and go home happy? It was a good thought, and it gave us the energy to load up the barrows one more time. I think when we were in the car on the way out here and during the planning for the trip, 
we had one goal really in mind, and that was for Tom to catch his first 40. I don't know many people who deserve it more than he does. And this lake, these fish are showing absolutely no signs of spawning, and we've seen patches of bubbles and two fish show. So we're gonna put in plenty of bait tonight. I'm gonna fish chod rigs, Tom's gonna be fishing big hook baits, and we're going for a proper big one. I'm not sure. I felt really confident at the Lost River. We, we'd spent a few days there, but we've just rocked up at this place. We, we, it's like we're starting again from scratch. So last minute change of plan. Um, I'm gonna move further down the lake because there's less weed and it's a bit deeper and hoping that the fish move out at night when the oxygen levels are low. Uh, Carl's gonna stay up here so we can cover as much water as possible and then um, link back tomorrow and see who's had the bites. Seen quite a few fish out by the island. Tom stood on top of a, a tree stump and pointed out and went, aren't they all carp? And we realized we shouldn't have been fishing close in after all. We should have been fishing tight to that island. That is so cool. I can literally hand place it in that little hole in the weeds. I just want to end the trip on a high. No one wants to go home at the end of a trip having struggled towards the end. Tom, you have got the carpier swim in existence. Yeah, <laughs> Look at this. I've boated two rods out to the island and now I think I'm gonna leave this rod on a trod rig and I probably won't cast it out yet. I'll just sit and watch the water this evening, ping it on a fish's head if I see one crash. Just seen it, I think it was a tench or it must have been a small carp just jumped out. I've got a carp. I've got a carp. I thought that was a bream. It's a carp, right? Whoa, that's running. I'm nervous now. Oh, I'm real nervous. We did it, we caught a car. I thought this one was a small common whilst I was playing it at first. Turns out to be quite a special fish. That is amazing. And if I've had one this evening, I think tomorrow during the day, that island spot's gonna do more bites. <laughs> that feels so good to get off the mark at a new lake. I think tomorrow could be awesome. another bite from the island this time slightly smaller common I get the feeling we're gonna work through maybe a few of these size fish before we find one of the real big ones but I'm happy that I got a spot going and I'm getting bites I feel like I'm learning this boat fishing thing a little bit better getting better at placing the rig without too much drama. Tom actually has a fish now. Tom actually has a fish. No. <laughs> Scrap that. It's come off. wasn't the Lost River. I mean, don't get me wrong, it was it was it was good fun for Carl. Me on the other hand, I had the curse of the tench. I must have had about 
20 tension, 24 hours. Oh, whoopa. Whoopa. Look at that for a tench. Mate. I think this week's fishing was probably the most sleepless week of my life. And I've done some long festivals. The carp I caught from the city lake were really cool. Obviously one of them was kind of small, but that strain, that really long, powerful, long lean, commons are my favorite. However, Tom wasn't so happy catching tench and the lake was proving pretty tricky. There weren't a lot of bites to come by. And I knew full well that where Tom wanted to be was the Lost River and what he wanted to be catching was big, ancient, 40 pound carp. We were wondering, have they stopped spawning? Are there pockets of fish that aren't spawning elsewhere on the lake or the river? We kind of decided it, it, it's definitely time to go back and have another look. We're home again. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Big dirty stinky bass. So many. May the cops we slay. Arise, Sir Thomas. Now get out there and find a cop. No, 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 with the boat, with oh. the boat. Oh. We found carp. The fish we'd found were held up in a reed bed south of the park and were grubbing around for food, ready to be caught. But with nowhere to set up on the accessible bank, instead we decided to boat across, camping in the grounds of an old abandoned factory and fishing under our rod tips. We made it and I think I might go to sleep. But there's, there's no shade. Why did you choose this spot? Well, the golf were here, so that's why we are also here. Oh, I've been stung again on my bomb. Yeah, both of the spots are very, very clear. They've landed on firm lake bed. The fish have definitely fed in this area recently. I'm gonna fill it in with loads of bait and we're gonna catch a big one tonight. Ow, got stung by another nettle on my bottom. I'm not feeling this anymore. The fish always seem to be one step ahead. We, we find something to go on, we set up, we get fishing, and then nothing seems to happen. We didn't even catch any tench or bream last night. I don't know what to say. Not entirely sure how we're gonna crack this place, or if we even are at all. It's whole graft when you get there. It's not, it's not quite like just staring on Google Maps and catching all the fish you dreamt about. We had two more nights, and the more we thought about it, the more it made sense to go back to where we had our first taste of success earlier in the trip. Most of the fish traffic was in and around this channel. It was like the fish's highway in and out of the park. So we decided to split up. Tom plotting up at one end of this channel and me at the other. However, we went for slightly different approaches. Tom went in big bed of boilies, big hook baits, massive spreader bait. He wanted to catch a big one at the end of the day. Me, on the other hand, stalking in the park all through the day. I just needed somewhere I could just drop a couple of chod rigs in, maybe a little handful of bait, and just try and nick a bite. As we set up for the night, the weather changed once more. The heat had returned, but joining it was a fresh, strong wind that put a certain feeling into the air. We'd spent a lot of nights that week feeling confident as the sun set behind our rods. Good luck. You too, mate. But it was truly different this time. This wasn't false confidence or hopefulness. It was a quiet understanding that finally we were going to have one. Tell me why. <laughs> Ain't nothing. I don't actually know. But a bream take. <laughs> Feels kind of like a mistake. <laughs> Tell me why. Did I feed hemp on both spots? I did it the cow. <laughs> the car way, yeah, the stupid way. Oh my gosh, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. 
I can't tell if it's just the lights on, but that looks huge. Mate, it's, it looks massive. I'd eventually caught one off the bottom, but had no time to show it to the camera, as over on the other side of the channel, Tom was also into a fish. So this was it, this was what we were waiting for. Tom had finally hooked one, however, the line had gone solid. We jumped in the boat and we started chasing this fish down to the reeds. We noticed that the line angle is definitely heading to the back of them. This fish is proper solid. People don't think fishing is full of adrenaline. It, it is 100%. My heart was beating out of its chest. Once the boat couldn't really get any closer, but the fish was still snagged quite a way away, Tom realized he's gonna have to get in the water. I'm wading through these reeds and I'm pulling them back slowly. As I spread the reeds, I feel it kicking. You know. I just see this cop. Wait, I can I can see something. I'm sitting there oh, with a side four, sitting out the corner of its mouth. Before you know it, it just bolted off through the reeds. Through metres and metres more reeds. It was carnage. And as you can see by the footage, it's a blur, but it was one of the best experiences okay. of my life. I'm just keeping the pressure on. Get back in the boat, bro. Oh, I can feel him running. Here you go, here you go, here you go. Do we've got the rust? Yeah. Good lad. Yes, Tom, he's still on. To finally get that fish in the net. Yes! After all them sleepless nights, all them bream, all them tench, and my first Dutch carp in the net. We finally had Tom's first carp of the trip. Hmm, my night. Now the thing with carp fishing. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. I caught a fish. So, now I'm carpy. It had taken nine days of hard work, hot days and bream filled nights, but we'd finally had carp and there was still a day to go. Tom wasted no time in resetting and rebaiting his rods. <gasps> can't waste a single one. But as soon as the sun was up in the sky, there was only one thing I wanted to be doing. Oh, it's a big mirror. See the bread? That was so close, man. <gasps> to my left, there's so many. This is an opportunity. This is a big opportunity, Tom. Come on. Yes, 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 yes. Yes! That's an unbelievable fish, Tom. It's a massive scaly one. Oh my gosh. If it gets around that post, I am, it's game over if it goes around the post. It's game over if it goes around the post. That's an unbelievable fish. <gasps> Seriously, man. Come on. Do not come off now. This is a different beast from the last one. It, it's a completely different animal. Come on then. Make my entire trip. Mr. Carp, please. Yes! Yes, 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 yes! Oh, wow! That's the most special carp I've caught in a long, long time. Maybe in my life. <laughs> That's amazing. It's a mirror. It's did, that mirror. Did he not tell you? Didn't he tell you what one it was? No. So on one side, it looks ridiculous. And on the other side, it's like also ridiculous. Oh my God, Carl. <laughs> Look at that. That's what I came for, man. An incredible carp. I don't think I've caught a fish as long, powerful and scaly as this in a long, long time. I think it's just time that Tom catches one. I think he deserves it at this point. We'd worked hard and caught carp, and whilst the tough fishing could easily have gotten Tom down, I was glad to truly enjoy the final evening with my friend. Silly salmon, incoming. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have to catch any carp anyway. No, we could just go swimming. I got some good news. Go on, hit me. I've seen a couple of really decent fish drift through the um, channel. In fact, as I speak, there's one drifting through the channel towards your spot. I'm literally videoing one right now, cruising through. Good luck. You too, bud. Sight lines. Be 
be the big mama. It's just like slow. It's not like whizzing off like a small fish. Come on, Tom. Oh. Get in! <laughs> Tom had landed a beautiful carp, and just ounces away from 40 pounds, it might not have been the fish we'd dreamt of, but in its pursuit, we'd rediscovered a friendship that had gone forgotten for far too long. Buzzing. I can't believe it. We're finally carping! Yay! <laughs> Get in! We've done it! <laughs> We've done it! Gets me very excited for what's to come. <laughs>